Hi, everybody. My name is Marcus Davis, and I am the founder and enterprise director of Urban Array. We are a decentralized, crowdsourced social enterprise that's built and powered by people to serve others. What that means is that we use the power of the community to build, rehabilitate, and grow neighborhoods. This presentation is geared more towards tech-minded and especially people within the blockchain community. You do have to have some basic understanding of what blockchain is and the general idea behind decentralization. But even if that isn't the case, most people can pretty easily follow along. Our mission and values are pretty simple. We're builders. Our goal is to build technology that gives people and impact organizations the processes and tools to accomplish their missions and to build and grow thriving communities. Our vision is to build an ecosystem or microeconomy of shared value that allows everyone, not just the poor or the low income or under-resourced or whatever, not just people that are, quote, in need, but all people can benefit from serving others. And this is especially true for normal everyday Americans that before the financial crisis thought they were participants in this economy and found out that a lot of the institutional uh, rules and regulations weren't really built to benefit them. So this is really trying to provide an ecosystem where everybody can have a base standard of living that participates. And our values center around a triple bottom line perspective people, profit, and planet. We want to build communities and social enterprise with core values centered around social responsibility and environmental and economic sustainability. Economic sustainability is important in order to build an organization that can perpetuate itself instead of the traditional nonprofit model where nonprofit managers constantly have to go back to the donation well. Once we're up and running, we want to have solid economic principles that both allow us to be able to provide impact for communities, but then to continue to provide that impact over time without having to go back to funders or to have to stop providing services for a community because we've run out of money. Economic sustainability is just as important as social responsibility and being environmentally conscious in the work that we do. In the tech world, it's important to remember kind of where we came from. Tech, and especially blockchain, were created to connect people with main focuses on things like democratization, to be able to democratize voting access, to be able to amplify voices, and to be able to connect people with one another. Decentralization was one of the primary focuses in the beginning because there was this need to remove third parties and centralized authorities. In Bitcoin's case, the ethos was built around removing centralized banks or governments from being able to control commerce between individuals. It reduces the amount of cost in the system by removing the middleman, but it also decentralizes control from central banks, which allows people to do more with their money. It allows us to be able to create a system of, of rules without rulers. And autonomy and privacy, the idea of giving people the ability to voice their opinions, support causes, donate, vote, collaborate, participate without fear or judgment or reprisal. As an industry thinking about where we've come from, it forces me to reflect on my origins and to explain the framework or the vision or the worldview in which Urban Array kind of came to me. I grew up in a military family, so I grew up all over the world and in different countries and states. Uh, mostly on military installations. But in the summer times, my mom would ship me off to Chicago. My grandmother lived on uh, 79th Street. And as a kid, I could see visually the differences between the two environments that I was growing up in. One being on a safe, secure military installation, and the other being on the South Side of Chicago during the 80s and 90s. And as a kid, I saw the inequality represented visually. But as I got older and I started studying a lot of the economics and the dynamics of social systems, I realized that the starkest difference wasn't visually, but more in the difference in outcomes between people who grew up with me on military bases and those friends that I had uh, during my summer times in Chicago. So thinking on that, I parallel that to kind of a tale of two cities. 
And what I've deduced is kind of four basic things. This is not an all-inclusive list by any stretch, and it's not this simple, but four basic uh, pieces to building thriving communities. The first being employment. Uh, jobs and a basic level of income make people feel like contributors. It instills in them kind of a sense of duty and, and responsibility to themselves, their families, and one another. Safety and security allows people to invest in their communities, and it builds trust between members uh, of the community, and it fosters and grows relationships. With those two staples in place, ownership and investment becomes important. And it fosters a commitment to the community at large. And, and it doesn't always have to be material. It can, it can be ownership over a, a project, a cause, a plan. Ownership over any element of their community where someone feels like they have a charge. And merit-based rewards and advancement. Now, to use the military example, that, that manifests itself in terms of like badges and ribbons and stripes and all the regalia that you think of when you think about a military uniform. But in reality, it represents the fair and transparent meritocracy, which encourages achievement and commitment to goals. So understanding those four pillars, these are some of the issues with the current system of community development. Undersourced communities have a lot of pressing issues that need to be dealt with immediately, and traditional community development has many hurdles when trying to tackle very complex problems. First being unresponsive government. And even in the heightened political times we live with all this polarization, it goes beyond that. Large bureaucracies are detached from the local communities that they're charged to serve. And so what this leads to is long implementation times of policy and also misallocation of a lot of resources. Market-based solutions haven't really worked. While the market is great for creating efficiencies, fostering innovation and scaling, it's not always designed to maximize output for people in need. And lastly, access and use of resources. Many organizations and governments and communities exist in these silos, and with no way to cross-reference excess resources or to broadcast needs, you end up with excess materials in one community that are desperately needed in another, and no way for them to be able to communicate to get those resources there. Urban Array is building a decentralized ecosystem that uses blockchain and distributed technologies to build enterprises, complete community development projects, and grow value in all communities. So our ultimate goal here is to build ecosystems and microeconomies within these neighborhoods to help trap value. One of the problems with under-resourced neighborhoods is that because there isn't a lot of business activity already in those neighborhoods, people are forced to both work and spend from outside of their communities. So someone may live on the south side of Chicago or in a low-income neighborhood in Detroit or LA or New York, but they're forced to work outside of those neighborhoods in, in, in better, more prosperous neighborhoods. While they may live in the community, when they're forced to spend, that money immediately exits. And so the idea here is to use a decentralized system of volunteers coupled with a Raycoin, a cryptocurrency built within this network, to be able to trap some of that value within the community and to have it circulate four or five times before it exits. Take a look at this graphic and you'll see kind of all the basic ideas that we have that we can implement within the first year or so. Both skills of our members and donations from the community is where everything starts. There are two key elements of our technology, one being a micro project management system, the other being a resource inventory. The micro project management system allows us to be able to create an inventory of all the skills of all the members within our network, to be able to match that with projects or to be able to design projects based on the skills that we already have within our group. The resource inventory, I kind of akin to uh, the free section of Craigslist, where people may have wood from a deck that they deconstructed or extra computers or technology pieces that they have at home that they're willing to hold, but they can post them within our resource inventory and community developers can use those in projects. The micro project management system coupled with the resource inventory allows our platform to help community members work and build these projects. From a technology perspective, here's a visualization of our tech stack. 
At the bottom level is the blockchain. The blockchain layer can handle things like identity management, uh, reputation, which includes points, badges, karmas, and ranks uh, that are given to members based on their participation and projects completed. The stake smart contract allows us to be able to apportion rewards to people when they participate in a project and distribute those rewards almost immediately. Array coin is the cryptocurrency that facilitates the value movement within the entire network. The blockchain also allows us to keep an immutable log of contribution history. So every hour, every item donated will be tracked, traced, and recorded within the blockchain forever. And our governance mechanisms that control voting, selection of project, upvoting of project, and final decision making for the community. The center layer is the UA platform itself. The UA platform is the foundation of an organization. This holds the skills inventory, the resource inventory, gives us the communication tools and a knowledge base that allows us to be able to educate our members and to create educational modules to allow people from the community to be able to gain new skills, track, trace, and test those skills. The third layer, is the project management layer. The goal here is to have people from all over the world and all communities, especially developers, be able to get together and build applications on top of our platform that solve specific needs in specific verticals. So the first two that we're gonna be working on in the next six months are the urban farm and the residential rehab modules. Uh, the urban farm idea is pretty simple. An urban farm where people can help build the farm and then use their array coin to come back in the spring or the fall and be able to get fresh fruits and vegetables. The residential rehab is an awesome idea because it allows us to, for example, take a three flat in Chicago, the skills and the resources that we develop from the community and rehab a three flat. We can take two of those units and sell those to low income families, maybe 5% above cost. And that third unit then becomes a communal asset. So the way this ecosystem would work is someone could spend 20 hours working on an urban farm in Tampa and then be able to spend their array coin at the communal condo that's owned by Urban Array in Chicago. Multiply that by 20, 30, and 50 cities, and what you've now built is this microeconomy that helps and serves all the members that participate within it. And additionally, we have individual project instances that all function off concurrent smart contracts. The idea for a concurrent smart contract is pretty simple. If community members engage a particular project, they then have stake in the rewards from those projects. This is a very simple example of how it would work. With the concurrent smart contract, any revenues from a sale or from rent paid or any other type of value that comes into that project is distributed amongst all the stakeholders within the community. Our first goal is to be able to pay back investment. Investment from Urban Array, any debt that we acquire in the form of building loans, etc., and any external investors that have decided to pitch on in that particular project. Next is the actual network participants. So every volunteer that helped with the marketing or picked up a hammer or helped promote the restaurant gets a stake equal to their participation within that project. What this graphic doesn't show is that members get reward proportionate to their participation. If member one gives 10 hours, member two gives 20, member three gives 18, each one of them will get allocated a reward based on their participation in that particular project. And that goes on indefinitely as long as the project instance still exists. Next is the project treasury. So this holds any operational costs or maintenance costs for that specific project. The global treasury is the urban array treasury, which handles administrative costs, but also gives us some money to be able to reinvest in other social enterprise projects and community development projects. And then a small amount will go to the global member payout. The idea here is to encourage consistent participation from all members of the network and all types of projects. So a small percentage of every project goes to the entire community for any member that's participated at a fixed number number of hours in that particular month. So as you see, this concurrent smart contracts allows a decentralized organization to be able to incentivize all of its members and to be able, through open participation, to be able to serve members of under-resourced communities.
That's it for this particular introduction of Urban Array. I thank all of you for listening. If you'd like to connect with Urban Array, you can find us at urbanarray.org. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at Urban Array. Or you can connect with me directly at marcus at urbanarray.org. We are excited with the momentum that we have about this project, but our organization and our vision is only as strong as the members that participate. And the most important thing with this organization is scale. So if you have any skills or talents or want to belong to this community, please contact me because we cannot do this without you. 